up, the Taliban has a new secret weapon to attack Americans. Yep, you're looking at it right now. That's going to have our Willis watchdogs going bananas. Don't go away. Okay, there's a lot to talk about with today's Willis's watchdogs. We begin with a confusing request from Interior Secretary Ken Salazar to the Presidential Commission on the BP oil spill. Seems Salazar said he's looking to the commission for information to help shape the administration's position on deep water drilling, the ban. Well, that was news to the commission. Co-chairs who were stunned by the request, they say Salazar's office assured them giving advice on the moratorium wasn't their job. All right, let's meet our panel. Radio talk show host Mark Levine, Red Eye Ombudsman Andy Levy, and Colleen DeBay, small business editor at the Wall Street Journal. Mark, let's start with you, sir. What do you make of this? I don't make much of it at all. You're telling me the Interior Secretary actually wants to find out what went wrong with BP in order to determine what kind of regulations we have on deep drilling? Doesn't seem very controversial to me. You're a pro. Okay, Colleen. <laughs> I agree. It doesn't seem controversial to me either. You know, I mean, I guess we can add it to the list of things that are unclear with, with this situation. But yeah, I mean, the Commission's marching orders are to figure out what went wrong and whether offshore drilling is safe. So it doesn't seem crazy to me that he would ask. Weird to you, Andy? I don't think it's weird, but I, it seems to me that the administration's already made up its mind on deep water drilling, so I don't know why they're looking for any information. Maybe they're looking for some backup. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think likely. they've made up their mind. I, if you read Salazar's statement, it very clearly says there are a whole bunch of things he's going to look at. This is just one of them. They're going to look at basically whether companies can stop oil spills in the future, and right now they can't. They, they talked about cleaning up walruses in the Gulf. They really haven't looked hard at how to clean up oil spills. Yeah, that was, that was sad. All right, let's move on to the next story. Yesterday, we told you how the administration of New York's governor, David Patterson, awarded a multi-million dollar no-bid contract to GHI, the health care provider whose parent company employs his wife. How convenient. Well, it turns out the governor had no idea the contract even existed until he says he read about it in the morning paper. Colleen, your thoughts. Oh, it's so good that newspapers still exist, you know, <laughs> for this very reason. Um, you know, this certainly has the appearance of impropriety. I don't know if that actually is the case in any event you know whether or not the wife was involved or if the company knew about this I think the bigger the larger issue is that uh, you know this company got a contract there wasn't a competitive process in place other companies weren't able to bid on this you know I write about small business small businesses depend on things like government contracts especially in times of recession so I think that is the the larger problem here Mark, come on. I'm a little outraged here. I mean, you think this is good that the governor of New York is giving his wife's firm money? I mean, come on. Well, Jerry, first of all, the governor and his wife didn't know anything about it. Second of all, there couldn't have been surprise, any competitive surprise. bidding. <laughs> the, the federal government required a nonprofit organization that had statewide health care experience. There was only one in all of New York State, <gasps> and that was surprise, GHI. There and was that's only why there could be no we competition. Wrote the criteria so specifically, I'm sorry. No, I'm it's, it's just one <laughs> statewide experience. <laughs> Look, if, no smoke, if, no fire. If Patterson said he didn't know about it, I believe him. I, I don't think a politician would ever lie about not knowing about a $297 million no-bid contract for a company when his wife works for the parent company of that company. That would I never just, happen. That would never happen. We just got to take him at his word on this. <laughs> well, Cheney knew about Halliburton, so this is different. This is different. All right. Okay, guys, let's move on to the next story. Baseball fans are reeling from the death of George Steinbrenner today on the morning of the All-Star Game. The legend nicknamed The Boss rebuilt the New York Yankees into a sports empire, an empire that could be a billion-dollar windfall to his heirs thanks to the expiration of the federal death tax. Andy, let's start with you. I'm a Mets fan. I grew up hating George Steinbrenner, and it really it took a show by another Mets fan, Seinfeld, to make me not hate him, and, which is weird. But you got to hand it to, Seinf to Steinbrenner. I mean, he always put his mouth where his money is. You, you can't say he didn't. What, you know, <laughs> right. he was constantly in the paper. He built the Yankees back up and made them the amazing organization they are today. All right, Mark, what do you say? As a diehard Red Sox fan, I also grew up hating George Steinbrenner, and he was a great guy to hate. I mean, he was the perfect evil empire guy. Wouldn't even let you wear your hair lower than a certain amount. But as the guy died, uh, you know, i got to say something nice about him. Look, he really did build an empire up from nothing. you got to give him credit for that. Yeah, and invented all kinds of things we'd never heard, heard of before. Free agency, yeah. really amazing. Colin? Yeah, but it's, it's not only an empire, but... It really, the Yankees, I never thought of them like this really, but it's, it's a family business. You know, Steinbrenner had owned the Yankees in 73. He has left his sons in control. 
One thing you should realize is that a lot of family businesses don't make it to the, the aren't able to successfully, successfully transition, transition to the second generation. One other family business in sports that has done this well is NASCAR, actually. That's a third generation yeah. owner. So maybe the Yankees can take a few tips from NASCAR. Well, talk about luck. You know, the estate tax right now until the end of the year, zero mm -hmm. percent. So yeah. the, those heirs will have yeah. a lot of money to plow mm -hmm. right back into that it's business. It's a good time to die. All right. <laughs> I don't know if luck is going to work. Yeah, no, probably not. But let's go on to the next story. Talk about meddling mothers. A new website, fabover50.com, puts the power of matchmaking squarely in mom's hands. The site lets moms post photos of their single sons or daughters to get this, to help them get dates. So far, 20 parents and their grown children have signed up. Colleen, what do you think of those? Well, I was reading about one of the stories where it's a... Uh, a grown man whose mother is posting on this site to try to get him dates. My theory is that I think he's just emotionally unavailable and probably doesn't <laughs> want to get married. So I think this woman is doing a disservice to the women of New York because she's trying to match women up with this man this, who doesn't want to get married. This young man is not happy. Just look at the picture. Mark, what do you say? I say go mom. I got to tell you, maybe it's just my Jewish upbringing, but I'm surprised it took them this long to do this. Every time I, a Jewish mother I know or grandmother is a yenta, I'm surprised they didn't do this before. And you know what? If he didn't like it, yeah, they should take it down. But he doesn't seem to mind too much. I say go mom. But Mark, if it was you, wouldn't you be embarrassed? Well, I might be, but I'm a mama's boy, so what can I do? It tell? doesn't matter to you. Andy? I'm a Jewish son, and this is my worst nightmare. I am so happy right now that my mom doesn't get Fox Business Network. You cannot believe it. Th there's a line in Star Wars after uh, the Death Star destroys Alderaan. Obi-Wan Kenobi says, I felt a great disturbance in the Force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and suddenly were silenced. That was how I felt when I heard that this website was around. This is the scariest thing ever. You will pay for your lack of vision, young Jedi. Probably. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next story. Taliban terrorists reportedly have a new secret weapon. <laughs> I can't even say this. Monkey marksman. According to the People's Daily in China, we often cite the People's Daily in China, the Taliban is training monkeys and baboons to use AK-47s, machine guns, and trench mortars to attack American troops. Mark, help yourself. I think somebody punked the Chinese. I really do. Maybe this is what happens when you have an unfree press. You tend to believe anything someone tells you. I looked at that video. I could not stop laughing. I kept wondering how the monkeys found the, the triggers because there weren't any on their bananas. I mean, come on here. Andy. Uh, yeah, here's a good hint that this story isn't true. Uh, it claims that training monkeys to be soldiers was started by the CIA in Vietnam. <laughs> That's completely not true. So you just take it from there. The rest of it's not true. As an Army veteran, I can assure you, we weren't paid in bananas. We were paid in peanuts. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I just think it's ridiculous, and I don't, I don't know why monkeys. I don't know. I would think, you know, maybe like German shepherds or something else would be more effective, so. I don't know. I think, yeah, <laughs> I, they both kind of scare me. German shepherds yeah. can't pull the trigger. That's true. It's a wild video. I That's think true. they would be scarier. No. They would terrify people more. All right, guys. Thanks for your help today. Andy, Mark, Colleen, thank you.